Hi there, welcome to Eddie's Research. Um, obviously, here we go again. I posted up the image of the last uh, article that I released, which was climate change. The graphs, uh, quite interesting to have a look at. If you want to have a, well, if you want to look at it, um, it's a bit more in depth than just somebody telling you it's two percent or one percent. So, for this bit of research, um, I'm going to go into a new type of currency called stablecoin. What is that? Hey, or yell? Well, it's a form of electronic money. In the alternative media, one of the ongoing theories is there will be a new type of currency, and everyone in the world will have to use it no matter where you're from, and that the creation of it is hidden from view until they release it fully. Well, how do people know that they'll create something that's hidden? Simple, it's not. Well, not really, it's just not easy to find. The majority of people online tend to have the attention span of a few minutes. Think about it. You look at a news article, skim through it, close it, and go and do some shopping. If someone wants to ask you about the article, you probably won't be able to say what 100% of the page was about. It's the same with research. If it's handed to you on a plate in the form of a video, you'll watch it, but probably not take it all in. Imagine then if it's buried away in a website somewhere. Anyway, back to the main article. As everyone knows, there are central banks. I'm not getting into the what are they route but the actual stable coin. So I'm going to be looking at uh, the Bank of England as a main starting point. Yep, again, everyone has heard of them, but who really has looked at their site? Not many, and I can fully understand why. So here they are. This is the uh, Bank of Inl England website. What an exciting sight. Eh? I could spend hours in here, but then again I could glance and go elsewhere. Look at this. It's awesome. Awesome. What's a Sonia? I ain't got a clue. But I did stay and I found this. Yep, the financial stability report, because, you know, that's what we all go and look for. So, uh, here it is. It scrolls down. You have a bit of an overview. And uh, then you have the content. In section 5, here. Um, is the in focus systemic stable coins and financial stability. So I've actually screenshotted the main parts, which I'll explain what it's all about in a second. So this is the main blurb. Uh, stable coins are digital tokens that claim to maintain a stable value at all times, primarily in relation to existing national currencies. They could provide benefits to users but they will be adopted well widely and become successful as a safe and trusted means of payment only if they meet appropriate standards and confidence in their value is assured at all times. In particular, their users may be assured of their ability to redeem their money in cash at face value at all times, as they are with private money, commercial bank deposits that is in widespread circulation in the UK today. The FPC, along with many authorities internationally, is considering how the regulatory system should adapt to, to ensure this, while supporting innovation in an efficient way. It is also considering the potential effects on financial stability more broadly if stable coins were to be adopted wildly. A discussion paper on these issues will be published in due course by the bank. That paper will also address issues that may arise in connection to the introduction of a central bank digital currency, the CBDC, an electronic form of central bank money that could be used by households and businesses to make payments. So then there's bits that go into a bit more. So again, I've copied and pasted the bits that I've found uh, as it's just odd sentences, but they're all in that section five of the report. Stable coins are a type of crypto or digital token that claim to maintain a stable value at all times, primarily in relation to existing national currencies. If attractive to users, stable coins have become widely used by households and businesses in the UK as a means of payment, but they will only be adopted widely and become successful as a safe and trusted means of payment if they meet appropriate standards. Firms in stablecoin based systematic, uh, systemic payment chains that are critical to their functioning should be regulated accordingly. To ensure this, the bank, as the regulator of systemic um, payment systems with the objective of maintaining financial stability, would need to have the necessary powers over systemic payment firms that use stablecoins, including stablecoins issuers and um, wallets. Given the need for reform, 
to the regulatory framework as payment technologies evolve, the FPC supports HM's Treasuries, as Her Majesty's Treasuries HMT's payment uh, landscape review and its planned consultation on the UK regulatory approach to crypto assets and stablecoins. Two types of money circulate and are used for transactions in the UK today. Money issued by the public sector, your cash and reserves held to the central bank, and money issued by the private institutions, primarily the deposits of commercial banks. In recent decades, privately issued money has become more dominant as a means of payment. Around 95% of the funds people hold that can be used to make payments are now held as bank deposits rather than cash, compared to around two thirds in the 1980s. Um, oops, hang on a second. Just so you know, I'm going to look at the, the review, this review later on, and show you what that is. Stable coins could be an additional type of private money if they are to be adopted widely. Um, then as with bank deposits, confidence must be assured in the public's ability to redeem their money in cash at face value at all times. The FPC's second expectation addressed this, where stable coins are used in systemic payments chains as money-like instruments. They should make standard equivalent to those expected of commercial bank money in relation to stability of value, robustness of legal claim, and the ability to redeem at par in fiat. Implementation of this expectation would maintain a payments landscape where users can substitute between different forms of money without consequence for their levels of protection. To ensure this remains the case in future, other forms of private money such as e-money would also need to meet the FPC's expectations were the issuers to become systemic. The FPC is considering how the regulatory system can adapt to ensure this while supporting innovation in an efficient way. Oh no, I've got it, it took me ages to read this. Another possibility would be to back uh, systemic stable coins with central bank money in one form or another. Such an approach exists in the UK for private issuers of physical cash in Scotland and Northern Ireland. If a stable coin were backed only by central bank money, it would be economically similar to the CBDC. This is an electronic form of central bank money that could be used by households and businesses to make repayments or payments. The discussion paper will therefore also explore questions about the role of the private and public sector in the provision of money, building on the bank's March 2020 CBDC discussion paper. We'll look at that later on. Uh, growth of stablecoins uh, could have implications for wider financial stability, including reinforcing existing large flows of money, for example, during stress. <laughs> and if you've not fallen asleep, I'll carry on. So basically, it's a form of cryptocurrency. It states that the user should be able to access the money if wanted, in that great box at the beginning. Central bank will be used by households as well as businesses to make payments. So the last bit is very interesting. Why is the central bank looking after my payment to say British Gas instead of my high street bank? I'll just leave that question to float out there. Now remember this was a report released at the end of 2020. Was it discussed at earlier dates? We'll look at that in a bit, but first back to those notes that I mentioned. I've mentioned some notes. So, given the needs for reforms to regulatory framework as payments technologies evolve, the FPC supports HM Treasury's payment landscape review and its planned consultation on the UK regulatory approach to crypto assets and stablecoins. So what this is, is the Treasury put things out, as do the other departments like the COVID passport is doing the rounds, so the public can put down their thoughts. Interestingly enough, I can bet a large amount of money if I had any that the majority of people don't know about this type of thing, especially the many that are in the alternative field. Moaning on the YouTube comment section is a waste of time. You need to fill these in. On, on a random thing, a while back, uh, for example, YouTube was enacting copper. Again, many people moaned on YouTube, posted videos, comments, etc. But how many actually went to the website where you could add the comments? Not many, I can tell you this, because I did, and there were hardly any posted. Basically, you need to remember that any change, you need to go through the channels that they allow to have the voice heard. Because, you know, the government's not scouring through YouTube looking for a random person with a random name replying going, oh, I don't want this. Because who's that person? Could be anybody. Could be them for all we know. 
Anyway, back on track. So here it is, the Payments Landscape Review, call for evidence. It was from July to October 2020. Uh, obviously it's ended, but you can actually still view, view them down here, uh, the actual proposals. Um, the landscape review was announced in June 2019. What were most people looking at on the news in 2019? I think I can guess the answer. I've read it and here are the salient points, but please do read it if you're curious. It's 41 pages long. It starts on page 7 really, so it's, you know, it is what it is. It's lengthy. Let me just scroll through it briefly and show you what it is. There it is. There. There. Yeah, yeah, there, there. So I've, I'll point out the main bits. The government setting up a world's first economic regulator for payment systems, the payment system regulator, and bringing UK payment systems under formal regulation. Uh, I'll look at the PSR later. The PSR overseeing a change in the way the main UK retail payment systems are owned and governed, opening up access, enabling greater competition and innovation in payment services and ensuring the needs of end users are taken into account when decisions are made. The government capping interchange fees and banning surcharging to reduce costs for consumers and businesses. The government legislating to enable a check imaging system to be developed in the UK to speed up check processing and eliminate the need to physically transport two and a half billion checks per year per road by road. Now I never knew that they transport this amount of checks yearly. You know we scan them in but that's, I didn't think that what happened. The Competition and Markets Authority are driving forward open banking to offer the opportunity for consumers to pay for goods and services in shops and online directly from their accounts rather than using a debit or credit card. Um, a major step forward on how consumers and businesses pay for things is on the horizon through open banking. Enable account to account payments through third party payment initiation services using open banking application programming interfaces. If account to account payments were to take off in the UK, this could lead to a significant change in how people pay for things in the country with debit and credit cards still account for most of the payments made by consumers in shops and online. So say goodbye to your plastic. Hence, the high street banks. Say goodbye to them. Crypto assets, including stable coins, is another important area of innovation. In its March 2020 budget, the government set out two commitments relating to crypto assets. Firstly, consulting on bringing the promotion of crypto asset activities into regulation. And secondly, consulting on the regulatory approach to state global stable coins. The government also set out its intention to continue to take a leading role in exploring central bank digital currencies. Now, I've said before, I'm going to look. Sorry, if you heard a cat, I've got a cat. Sorry about that. Um, we'll look at CDBC later. But crypto assets will be regulated. Is that Bitcoin? So, I just apologise if you hear a meowing. We've just got a cat, so you know you can't exactly uh, silence one. Um, one thing it mentions many times, and I was actually up to page 16 with this so far. Uh, it's a company called Pay.UK. Now, this is a single payment system operator that is overseen by the PSR to consolidate faster payments, BACS, check and credit. I'll look at them later, like other things. And this will be built into the ISO 2022 standard, or 2022 standard, which is a global standard for payments messaging, which, again, I may glance at. Now, this is also using check imaging. What is that? Well, as many as you probably know, when you go to your local high street bank with a check that someone sent you, you scan it in, get a printed receipt. Well, instead of the banks moving the physical piece of paper, they can use the image to process a lot quicker and safer. Now, I finally reached the new payment system, which is on page 18. Uh, and there you go. If you can't read it, the red is as follows. The issue, issuer provides customer with a payment card. Customer presents payment card to merchant. Acquirer provides merchant with card machines. Acquirer connects merchant with payment network. Network confirms payment with the issuer, tells the merchant to release the goods, and arrange the transfers of money from the consumer accounts to the merchants. Now, ironically, it's all to do with the wording. 
So that that was just like, yeah, we do this, we do that, the other, do the other. The blue is is the way that they blurb things. This is how corporate does it all the time. Yeah, I know. Um, so I'm talking the gap. Enhanced security by tokenizing car details, reducing their value to criminals. Enhanced security and convenience with fingerprinting authentication, allowing fast, high-value, contactless payment. Don't know what you do if your finger gets chopped off, but there you go. Enhanced security of online payments through additional authentication. Offers convenience and awards. Scan while you shop and other merchant-specific benefits over traditional payment cards. Makes payment acceptance more convenient through affordable hardware and software and simplified fee structures. So it all seems great. As I said, what happens in the worst case scenario, you burn your finger, that's the fingerprint. What's wrong with the old pin? Or even the touchless that we have currently? Anyway, back to the text. It also mentions digital wallets. These are the Apple, Google, Samsung Pay, etc. And apparently 10 million in the UK alone have these. Another fact that I think most are probably aware, but in 2019, half of UK per payments was made using cards, and debit cards accounted 42% of all payments. Uh, PayPal, PayPal have also entered the market in providing electronic access to your money, which is a vast majority use PayPal to pay for goods. We've all seen that you pay for something with PayPal and it asks if you want a credit card or something. I'll stop there for that PDF, as it's very long-winded, and if you want to read it, please do. I could be here for ages, but I've got a cat that's screaming for my attention, so that's not going to happen. On to the next bit. Banks March 2020 CDBC discussion paper. So here it is. It's 57 pages of absolute joy. It's 57 pages, like I said. But luckily, they created a summary. It loads up, and here is the summary. As they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. So, electronic form of central bank money. There you go. It says your banknotes, CBDC, and bank deposits, and. Um, in money, so it's all held by the central bank. There's you, the you. Money and payments are changing because we've all started using our debit cards more and not cash stuff. There's the opportunities for the bank's objectives, you know, whatever that means. Uh, designing a CBDC. There's us. Oh, it's the banks don't appear in this, it's just central bank. Uh, I can't see your local bank being mentioned. And your technology. On another side note, uh, looking at the Bank of England website, they had a meeting uh, in October 2020 where many central banks got together to discuss the CBDC. It's well worth a look, it's only about eight pages. And again, we have some pictures. So there is one, I'll leave that there for a few seconds. You can hit the pause button and read it. There's a bit more to it. It's all in that, in that article if you want to read it. And there. So uh, back to this topic again. The payment system regulator. Let's have a look at them. So here they are. So this is actually what they do. Uh, the ensure payment systems operate and developed in a way considers and promotes the interests of all the businesses and consumers that use them, uh, effective competition in the markets of payment systems and services, and the development and innovation of payment systems. And the cat is going to sit right next to me and meow in my eardrum in a minute before I strangle him. Here he comes. Oh, fuck. Yeah, good boy. Um, interestingly enough, I was looking at the news page and I actually found something. So I found this Payment Systems Regulator Publishing Annual Plan and Budget for 2021-2022. Now there's actually an image um, that's not on this page, but I have got it screenshotted. So here it is. It's uh, talking about the uh, renewal of the payment system by Pay.UK. Okay. 
So it's interesting to read that. So they did create a fact sheet for it. Um, quite interesting to have a little glance through it. Uh, I'm actually going to look for their annual report just for the sheer hell of it and see what it's doing in regards to all this, you know, the, the previous image that I just showed you. So the PSR and the Bank of England all point to this site. Now, it doesn't always load up. This uh, I was loading it up earlier and it just basically gave me a blank page. Oh no, there it goes. Right. So it will disappear. Um, so this is the main image. Oh, it's gone. And it just disappears completely. So why are they using Bitcoin as an image? Oh, sorry about that. Let me just click back and go there. Um, I know it's going to be a crypto, but is that because all know that that is the only image that everybody knows is it's a Bitcoin? So I'm going to about wrap this all up, apart from the cat. Sorry about that. Like I said, I can't do much about animals. Um, but let me just remind you why I was looking at this. Remember I said that in the alternative world, many have said there'll be new currency and people wonder why they're talking about it and where from. Well, there is a subtle clue. This is actually from 1988. You can just about read it there. Um, so it's, it's get ready for the world currency 2018 or only a couple of years out. So, you know, if you think about it, 2019's and but they were th talking about it around about 219, 220. And you'll notice that there's, um, well, it's not like one currency, like there's the dollar, uh, there's ours, others. Obviously, they didn't have the euro back then, but I'm assuming if the euro was there, that'd be burning as well. But it looks like a coin. So I actually found this article, it's a recent one. Uh, where is it? There. It goes into more depth about it, so it's probably very useful if you want to know about. You can't find this if you if you want to find find it, you have to actually pay for the Economist, and you probably then be able to get back issues. Um, so this is from there. Yeah. The Phoenix. New world economy. It's like the biggest change in the 70s. Phoenix and tight restrictions on national governments. There'll be no national monetary policy, so that if you forget your IMF and all that business, that'll be gone out of the window. See, look, the world Phoenix supply will be fixed by a new central bank descended perhaps from the IMF. So the IMF won't be there, all the other central banks, or the you know the Bank of England, they'll be gone. Um, or maybe not, I don't know, unless a central bank in it, but all the other banks will be gone. Um, so it's, it's very, pencil in the Phoenix for around 2018 and welcome it when it comes. So it's, it's very good to read, I would say, if you're very curious about the famous, where does this money, where does this idea come from? Um, so... I don't know, um, and it is a crypto. It's if it crypto wasn't really around then, but it's a cryptic kind of coin, and it kind of looks like a Bitcoin. And this is before cryptocurrency was kind of out there. Um, so, so that's why if you if you look in the alternative, they're all harping on about it, and people wonder where this possibly. Anyway, I'll stop there. Hopefully, I've not bored you completely. Uh, but it's all useful in my eyes. As I've said before, it's not all hidden. Most people just don't have the time or energy to go looking under stones. Uh, I did this before on the uh, climate one, uh, the uh, the graphs, and the previous one before that, with the where does the 99% or 98% come from? It's very interesting to have a look at if I were you. Um, there, it is a number. It does exist. It's not an arbitrary number somebody just thought up. But it's interesting to see how many of these world scientists actually um, how, many, how many it actually was and when you narrow it down it doesn't start off with a full amount of people basically it gets whittled down to a certain amount and then it becomes a 98 percent it's not that many obviously it's changed now but it, it, you know what I mean it's when people say the world scientists it's 
not. It's not the world scientists. It's just scientists who happen to be in the world. Um, anyway, as always, uh, thank you for watching this. Uh, I have posted the main article on my website. You can have a look at that. It's got all the links in there, so you can easily click on them. Um, below, I always leave them in here so that you can you can see them actually going to a website as opposed to me just posting this up and then you going, where the hell's that from? It could be just something you just scribble down. It's like, no, it's there. Goldbroker.com. The economists get ready for world currency. Now look, gold's gone down. It's gone down. Oh, oh my God, we better sell, sell. Sorry. Okay, well, thank you for watching and goodbye. Okay, uh, so just before, um, obviously this is the end of the video, but I'm, I've added this bit on here purely because I saw on the Economist website um, that they have a new um, article on the 8th edition of the uh, of, of this, and if it shows me on here, it was here about gaff coins, and so I was curious about it, and you can actually um, read it for free if you just put your email address in. Uh, obviously you can't have the magazine for free but uh, that might be something I might look at in the future because there's the good old ice I thing and the, the the bank thing so this is the digital currencies thing which is kind of what I was talking about before with the stable coin and it's this is the fed coin and the e euro and there's many others it's a very interesting article to read um, I will just go through it like that and pause it like that so you can read it without actually having to uh, pop your email address in if you want to and just pause it. Um, I'll just get to the end of here. And they, uh, the interesting thing is this video here, you can watch it on YouTube and um, so um, here it is on the YouTube website, on the Economist website here. Could digital currencies put banks out of business? It's a very interesting thing to read, um, and the video explains a lot. You know, some people always said, well, banks would be good if we get rid of them, but then who's going to hold your money? Maybe the central bank squad. So this, as we already said in the article in the video that I've just done, um, and it explains obviously then that the countries could have greater control over your money because they would have they'd be able to see what you're spending your money on. They keep harping on about China, but it, is it going to be China? It could be anybody, and literally anybody. It could be America, it could be Bahamas, or it doesn't really matter. Um, and, um, yeah, it's very interesting. And, of course, they say in the video it's that um, the, the bad things is the fact that it, cyber warfare could come up, you know. Um, if all the money is electronic in one central bank, then, of course, they'll call it a rogue state, but it could be anybody. I mean, literally, it could be a friendly state. It could be, you know, a European country or, or whatever. I'm not state, saying any names. I uh, could easily think, you know what? We don't like that country over there, um, whoever they are. We're going we're gonna to hack them. Don't have to name any names and just block them so they can't get any money. Great, good. And then their go-to economy goes completely downhill. And then they come in saving the day. So I will send you some money. Um, anyway, so it's very interesting to read. Uh, like I said, have a look at it if you want to. I've, like I said, paused it each way through. Um, and I thought I'd just pop this on the end of the video because it literally just came out after I recorded this. I'm not going to record the whole video again. So um, I've just popped this on the end. Okay, thank you and goodbye.